G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me video. This is going to be a water foliage landscape type of painting with a sky in it. And I'm gonna use a reference picture and I wanna show you the different things you can do when using a reference picture, okay? Mainly for your beginners and you uh, advanced beginners, you can try and keep up as well, all right? And um, I've got a, I'll, I'll show you the picture here. I've got my canvas laid out on the landscape profile instead of a portrait. And um, depending where we put our horizon line will depend how high you are looking at this area, whether you're up or down or at eye level, okay? All right, so get on over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is give you the size of the canvas panel in centimetres and inches. And also, uh, I'd always like to get the colours running up the screen. It gives you the opportunity to get the same colours I'm using or very close or similar, all right? It doesn't matter if they're not the exact same colour, so long as it's somewhere around there, because you're just learning. And um, I'll get, get you over here now and show you what we're going to look at and explain a few things before I get my canvas prepped for the sky area, all right? <laughs> so this is a reference picture I found on Pixabay and we've got a sky, we've got some hills, rocks or a cliff face and we've got foliage and a river stream running through the middle of it, okay? So work out what sky you want, whether you want it to be a sunset, a stormy cloud, a stormy sky or this uh, or just a beautiful blue and white fluffy clouded sky. And then we've got foliage here. So I'm gonna incorporate foliage, but I'm gonna do my style of foliage. I'm not gonna try and copy this exact. I'll do the way I like to do rocks. I'll explain in my video as we go along. And we've got some water here. And I wanna show you how we keep everything level so it doesn't look like it's going crooked. So I've done a rough sketch of where I want me horizon, me river, and some mountain layouts. The reference picture had a smaller area of sky, but I wanna make mine with a larger area. So I'm changing it up a bit to suit what I want my painting to look like. So first off, as I'm going to do, I've got my soft flowing craft paint here, and I wanna prepare the canvas for my sky to be blended. So I've just got that paint there, and I've got some clear retarder here, um, and a flat, two inch brush. This is just a cheap synthetic brush from a hardware store. And I wanna get all this mixed. So I'm gonna have a magic white surface on my beautiful canvas cloth board to blend a beautiful sky. And I'll show you how all that happens. Okay, so there's my sky. I just wanna crisscross this into the tooth of the canvas. Come down to my mountain area, what I roughed in with the pencil there. And just get a bit more on there. And this is gonna allow the surface of my canvas to stay wet to blend a sky. Because in most paintings, your sky is where the blending needs to happen. And there's not that much blending going on in the rest in my view. Mainly it's just scrumbling. All right, so we've got that done. And we'll get our sky virtually blue coming down pale. So my blue, for the sky, I'm gonna use just the phthalo blue. And I've got that um, brush. Haven't done nothing with it. Absolutely nothing, I've left it. Because I don't want me blue sky dark and loud. I want it kind of a real blue. So this is gonna help just soften it down. Okay, and we start at the top and bring it down to the horizon. So watch this. And also I've got that white on there. This is gonna mix with it now. So we've got the blue at the top. I'm rubbing it in and now I'm gonna start bringing it down in long horizontal strokes to where I want it. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I'll just get these ends mapped in as well and then finish it off. Now that's looking okay. It's a little bit on the dark side. I'll just pick up some more of that white and push into the bottom area here. That's it. Because the bottom area needs atmosphere and that atmosphere is created with the white. Okay. 
And now I just want to put some polluted atmosphere way out there just to add those elements of a real sky. But see that kind of baby blue? That's a real sky colour in my view. Now, I'm not going to use the blue anymore, I don't think. So I've got some quinacridone magenta. And we're going to make up a little bit of um, purpley colour. So let's get the littlest of that and mix over here and see what we get. A little bit more because we've got a lot of blue here. Come on. I can't, I've done that many videos with this colour and I keep forgetting how I do it. Sometimes I have to watch my own videos to remember, what did I do there? All right, we're getting that colour going. So I'm just, see, it's, it's very, I'm not going to put this colour on there. I'm going to pick up the white on my palette here and you'll see when I turn the headlights on. So now the colour is here. There's my colour there. So everything's still wet. We've just mixed up that purple, I call it polluted horizon line or polluted atmosphere. And I want to start at the bottom here. There we go. You don't want this purple too dark and we're keeping it straight, straight across the sky, straight across the horizon line, okay? Just like that. See, and you can see my brush, how the paint all wore off it where I was hitting the canvas. It's still on there, but there, that's what was massaging this into that blue. If I kept putting it all on there, I'll be getting paint everywhere and going, oh no, what's happening? So the end of my brush is clean, and that's what I'm doing to sort of blend that into there, okay? And, you know, this is just a painting. I'm happy with that, okay? But try not to make this colour, if you're adding this to the bottom of your sky, too dark. Okay, next colour on the palette is my titanium white from the tube which is the artist quality paint. It's totally different to this craft student flowing paint and some mid-tone gray. That's gonna be my clouds. And I'm gonna put my clouds on there with this one and blend them with this two inch brush I had from the hardware. And this smaller fan is just gonna add the um, shadow and depth to my clouds. And we're gonna be going backwards and forwards. So I'll show you what we mean. Now, virtually in the horizon, you want the littlest, lowest, smallest clouds. And we wanna create the look where they're coming over our head. So this is wet, everything's wet. I'll probably just put some, uh, where are we? Inkly dinkly bits down here. Let's hit something there, just a, there. That's an inkly dinkly bit of a low cloud. Because to me, in the horizon there, get them up and down different levels. In the horizon there, they're, they're getting very flat. So now we just want to blend these. I'm sort of blending them in a long way because these are very small, like that, see? Leaving the tops, but just blending the bottoms down. And it's, if anything, it's picking up some of that polluted area in there. These ones I won't really detail with yumminess and shadow. Okay, we can probably put some yumminess on them, but these are in the atmosphere. And watch this, we'll just pretty much Doing that and doing that. And every now and then I like to look in my monitor. Yep, that's fine. Just to see how we're going. We'll get a bit of the bigger one up here now. Now some of these might get covered up with our foreground and detail we're putting, but that doesn't matter. Be sure to watch my video all the way through if you're learning and you'll know what's gonna happen. All right, that'll do. Let's not muck around too much. Less is best. So my brush is clean and I've loaded it up again and I'll just work out just some subtle yumminess, just distincting these clouds. Putting this one there. Let me have a look there. Not too bad. I'm happy with that. Mainly the top. That'll do. Let's not get too carried away in. That'll do. Sometimes you can use your putter on brush to give it that final flick. Anyway, now let's do our sky. So I've loaded up my brush again and we're going to put some bigger clouds in the sky. And uh, Egan, why are you talking like an idiot? 
I've just realised I'm talking like a bloody idiot. Right, let's get into it. So, where do you want your clouds? Don't think, but if anything, spider them out. You don't want them in a spidery pattern. I'm just going to uh, do one, putting it on like that. Bing, bang, boogie, done. And then I'll grab my blending brush and something to constantly wipe it. And watch this. I mean, there's some big gaps in the top of this. You can move them together with this brush. Put a bit there. I'm picking up a bit. I've just put it there, right? See like that? Now, my brush needs to be constantly addressed with some wiping procedures. Yay, got to wipe that brush. Now, from the middle or just under the top, blend it, twist it, manipulate it. You're making all sorts of turmoil. See all the turmoil within the cloud. And this one can have a bit of a bottom on it. All right, just like that. Here we go. <coughs> get that out of there. I want to get rid of that hard bit there. Let me have a look at that. That's looking good. And maybe this bit I can wash all the way over our head there. And we can put one on the other side, but try not to make uniform patterns. All right, so let's put another one on the other side. So we'll put something here. I'm coming right off the image there, just like that. And see, it, with anything, to me, these points are pushing the clouds deep within and giving something over our head. All right, so I'll put that on there like that. Yeah, now we'll do the same again. Bit of, bit of blending. Now the top bit from there on, turmoil it right off the page, like I said, just like that. Wipe your brush and get a bit of a bum on this cloud because we've got to have some weather in here. I call the grey weather. Yeah. All right, so we got that done. That's the white done. Very easy, very simple. Now down here we have the grey. Now this colour we use for the polluted part of the sky, you don't want that for the shadow in the clouds because it's going to clash. Uh, use just your grey. I'm using a tidbit of that... Um, magenta in here just because sometimes the gray i've told you to look at the clouds you'll see the, sh the gray colors there sometimes that gray has a hint of purpley violety reddish tinge to it and my simple procedure is you've got the bottom of the cloud there but don't do it in a line make the bottom artistic and a bit crookedish but it's still a flat bottom and you're fingering sticks of this into the cloud so see the bottom and a few fingered sticks into the cloud. So easy like that. Grab your blending brush again. And you wanna, if anything, blend that heavy weathered bottom to your cloud. Look at this happen. And I'm using this bit of the brush now. Just to that fingery bit. Tinsy it together with the white. And we're getting all this weather. And the more you practice clouds like this, you'd have a lot of fun. Acrylic paints, sometimes can be difficult to get a good cloud but doing it this way not a problem look at that we got weather in that cloud we'll put some weather in the other one quickly while the camera's going make sure my camera's on yep okay and i'm going to get some up here so i've got the bottom <coughs> the bum of the cloud there we go blending that into the white softly You've got to control your blending as well. Some people can very easily blend it all into a mush. Okay, there we go. Now, the last bit to my clouds is the yumminess. So I've cleaned that smaller brush I added the grey with, and I picked up the titanium of white again. That's pretty bright there, I'll leave it. I'll sort of bring some of it into the cloud here. Maybe a dot there. I'm, I'm not even thinking. It makes its own mind up when you do this. Just like stabbing some bright white on there. And then we wanna easily blend that down into the cloud where the gray and the white is. But try not to wash your gray out and try not to wash this vibrancy away too much either because this is adding the third dimension to your cloud which gives it a 3D kind of a look, I feel. And that's all I do to my clouds. You've seen how I've done them. It's very easy. And if you feel it's not easy, just practice them. And I guarantee you, once you've practiced them, you can do clouds as easy as myself. Okay, my sky's finished. I can dry it. And as you can see, it doesn't look anything like the sky here, but I'm using this reference as subject matter, okay? I've got my sky. 
I want to put this rocky mountain cliff, whatever, there my own way. All right. All right, I've just been thinking about it now. I, this, this bottom half, instead of just painting this river here, I'm going to paint the whole lot as water and then block over my land mass as I need it and then the river will create its own shape from there. So I'm going to start off with me flow white again. I'm not worried about those edges because we're going to have stuff coming up. And this is going to virtually create the magic white. This is the white, the student paint and the retarder. Now I'm putting that on there. And we need those sky colours pretty much in there. Get that straight out there. That'll do. Now I've got some phalo blue still there. Uh, I, I just want pockets of this. Like that. I'm going to wipe that brush so as it's not thicker paint. Here we go. Just wipe it. And I'm going to pull this through the water. Just like that. Those bands are a very... See, if you don't like them, sometimes you sc oh, scoot them up or scoot them down and then pull them back again. I'll have to cover that bit of a mistake up. If I make any mistakes, I'm going to leave them there. Now, I'll pick up some of the purples. There it is there. We can put some of that here. It's not very dark. Some of the grey. Whoa, look at that. Some of the grey and the blue. I'm just sort of putting all the facets there. Wipe it again. And pull it through the painting. Okay. So I'm going to pull that through again. And we've pretty much got our water value colours there. All right. That'll do because my river's going to... I don't know how this river's going to look, but in the end of the painting it'll turn out. Now I've got burn umber here. I've just sprayed it with a little bit of water and I'm going to map in my rock area that will have foliage growing over it. I'll start maybe, mm, I'm not sure where to go from the middle, but anyway, let's get this. I'll get the top in. Now I've dried the water. This is rock, remember, we can have this coming off the page. Try not to destroy too much of your good sky. Okay, we've got the top there. Now the bottom, you don't want to bring it around and have it looking like it's sitting sideways. What you need to do, in my opinion, is keep it straight, but sort of come down on an angle to get that bent. So watch, I'm, I'm in the distance, I'm, look at that big blob there, get off there you. See that's coming down too much. I want these horizontal, like that, come down a bit more. Let's say there, that's, that's pretty much me rocked, blocked in for one side. Okay, and if you feel it's too small, you can add to it, bring it into the water a bit more. But you can see what I mean now when I put the bottom half water, it's now creating my river on its own instead of putting a river there and working out around it and things aren't working out for you, okay? So I'm going to block this in now, just up and down like so. And I love to put some highlights in there. But um, some of this paint is still wet. So I'm going to have to dry it again. See there? So I'm going to dry that. Okay, I've dried it and I've just blocked it in with the burnt umber again. Now I'm feeling this is pretty much a straight backdrop. I want it to have some land coming towards as I'm feeling in my mind. So now I want to get like pretty much a bank area. Let's just say whizzing out from the bottom of it somewhere here. Doesn't matter. It's all going to join up and then we, we shape it with our detail. We can have a bit coming out like that if we want. Now let me tell you, if you've done a craft paint retarder the way I do, very heavy under what you're trying to block in and it's not wet, this happens, it picks up the, see there, that happens. So you've got to allow for understanding that. I might bring it around here like that. I'm just changing this up a bit. So as I've got somewhere, now I want this all straight now. I'll get it straight, straight there. See what it's doing is 
what, what my brush is doing, it's digging all that retarded paint up because this paint's melting on top of it. That's why this is happening. I, I understand that, but you need to dry it very well if you have that happening, okay? Or you can probably do your water without the retarder. Anyway, there's me land mass. I'm going to block that in now. Okay, I'm just blocking in this other side with the burnt umber and I don't want too many square corners in me lake. Doesn't make them look right. I'm going to put a four ground rock here. So I'm going to have this virtually coming right in front of that. So it'll sort of, that'll be it there. Just so as I can cut that bottom area off with something closer. And then I'll get that edge reasonably sharp because it's very close to us. So that's just me rickety wackety wonkety edge there of this rock. That'll do. So that's going to be just one big one in front of that, sitting this one back. Now I'm just going to add the different values in those rocks and then we'll add the foliage. So simply down here, I'm going to get some of the white and just get an area here. Now my rocks look nothing like the ones in the reference picture. Everything here is um, wet. You could probably dry it, which I will. Now I've dried the damp areas and most of it, but it's still a little bit probably rubbery, I don't mind. And I want to get some, I don't know, let's just get any sort of different bits here. I'm gonna leave the top a bit dark. How come? Uh, because I want some foliage on there and I want it coming over the dark. So, and I'm also leaving the edge a bit dark. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I'll come over here, bring that up there, pretty much make the different layers of your rock, however. I'll get, and then with this highlighting, this will be just with the white, a bit more brighter white with this color to give our highlights. What's that looking like in there? Not too bad, it'll be okay. I'm just sort of not thinking, I'm just kind of creating rocks there. And I'll do the same here, like in this background area. Just, because it's good to, like I wipe that brush, you know, and scramble this sort of color with it. That's all you need, no thinking. Once we put some foliage there, it'll look all right. That's not too bad. I've got to put some dark in there, but I'll do that later. I want to get this foreground rock now. So I want top dark and I'll just do this like this. See that one's still very, very wet, not to worry. It's a different value of color there. I want to get some of this here. And like I said before in other videos, and I'll say it in this one, if you've done too much light areas, just go over it with the darker area color again. There we go. So now we've put that rock, it's like a big sheet of a rock there in front of all there. Now I'm picking up the white again. You can see next to that where we are. And I'm looking and I don't know, I just want some sort of lighter values hitting places here and there. Not too much with this. How's that? That'll do, I don't like that bent bit. I'll sort of get him scooting up, there we go. And the same in here now, look for where, I don't know, where light, lighter values might hit it on all the, you're finding your high spots and I'm just, you know, dilly dallying around here. And then I'll, I will put some, um, oh, it's too much out there. I will put some black in this just to give it that more real look instead of, I wanna lose any cartoon look that might be happening within this, okay? So I've given everything a bit of a dry, it's still rubbery that now. This mountain, I want in front of that, so I'm gonna add, I'm not worried if I kill that edge because I can always put it back, but I wanna bring some of the blacker values on that distant one, just like that, and work out where 
we need some darks. And if you've done too much dark, like I said, just add the, the lighter values back again, okay? Because these darks is pretty much the platform where we would like to sit our foliage, okay? So there we go there. How's that looking in the monitor? Reasonable, reasonable. And the same here, so I'll darken that up there. Bits of dark hip scooting up there. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just not really thinking. I'm just scurrying it around. I want the bottom of this up there dark. Oh, too dark there anyway. Because our foliage is going to pretty much accentuate on top of that. I don't know if that makes sense, but it sounded like a good word. It's going to sit on top of that anyway. And some up here where our foliage will be. I know I'm going to have foliage there, so I'm putting darker values within that brown. So it's not just brown and green. It's got depth. I might put something there. I'll, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't like that coming like an L shape. It looks a bit iffity effity. So I'm going to put pretty much a big close bush here. That's what I'll do, yeah. I'm gonna have the, the trees there. So I want the, I'll wipe that lighter color off. I want the um, darker value coming off that. And of course we can scurry some next to the lighter colors as well. Light and darks are good together, eh? Yeah, I like them. All right, I've just given that a dry and we're ready to detail this mountain now. And what I mean by detailing the mountain, like we're gonna put our foliage on our own way. If you're using a reference, you can copy it either exact or if you know how you love your foliage, you do it your way. Yeah, and um, oh, I had something on my mind then I was gonna, I forgot, what was it? Still can't think of it. Oh, anyway, we wanna get the foliage, I'm going to use this filbert brush. I bought this the other day. I used it in my painting before this tutorial and I absolutely loved it. I really loved it. So I'm going to use it again in this one because I reckon it makes such simple but effective foliage for a landscape painting, all right? So um, come back over here and we're just going to use greens. And what I mean by greens is I'm going to use forest green and cadmium yellow light. That's all. Those two colours are going to create, and maybe a bit of black in there, but they're going to create all the different values of greens that I'm using for here now, all right? So get back over here, and um, this is the part where you have your coffee as well. Give me the thumbs up. Check the links in the description below. All my tutorials are for sale. There's a link there to see what is available for sale. I'm just going to have a mouthful of me coffee here. And... Um, yeah, there's one for my Patreon page. There's also one for my art group page. Send uh, yourself um, a request to join that page and that's where you can show me your artwork and ask me questions. Uh, there's some admin people in there that can help you out as well, all right? So anyway, back over here and let's get right into this. So here we go. We've got our forest green out of a tube and we've got cadmium yellow light. And like I said, maybe a bit of black. So I want to get a bit of the black, not too much, just a oodle, oodleston bit, and then grab some green. This is gonna be a block in color, okay? So we've got a dark forest green there, and we're just gonna block in our canopy trees, whatever, over these rocks. So I wanna start from the very distance here and bring them over forward in front of each other. Okay, now this is just the block in stage, so don't worry. And you dribble them down. I'm making little like umbrella shapes and tracing it back down into the black there. Or not the black, the rock. The black, the darker color. And as you come forward, you can start putting some air between them if you like, from about here. And this is the, why I put black with this, this is adding the shadow. So when we put the actual highlighted colors on, 
That is the actual colour of our shrubs. Now here I might put some air in there. See how I did that? I just went and looked over the neighbour's fence. Oh, what's over there? Oh, they got a trampoline. There we go. And then we're making, this can trail down wherever you want. It can even come from there and go up. Trail down. And all the way on the top of this light. I want to leave that dark bit there to create depth behind. Okay. This is just my way. So many ways you can paint landscapes and sometimes you, you hit a idea with the way you can use a brush or what brush you're using or some colors and when you find that magic stick with it. All right I've done the same on this one. Now this one here this is reasonably close to us so we'll get some thicker bits and come onto the rock and then we'll look over the neighbor's fence and look at their trampoline with some air in the top of the canopy there. Okay. And we can come over there like that a bit, up here. And this green, you might think it's not showing up on my canvas that well, but it'll be there when you put the brighter colours there. So persevere with it. Come down a bit. All right, now we're ready to highlight those. And what we need to remember, the, the sun's up high in the sky, so the ones in the distance... Uh, need to be a bit lighter than the ones here, okay, in front and closer to us. Well, before we do, I better um, map this one in as well. The, you know, all here. So this is a lot closer to us now as well. So I'm going to, this bit of artistic bit I got carried away with before, I'll get this blocked in with some green, leaving some of the darks there. Now I want to mix up some of my green with the cadmium yellow light. Okay, there we go. Cadmium yellow light. And so we're getting a pretty much of a yellow green. And I want enough of it to have a third value, okay? And this is the third. Alright. Now, the bit in the distance where we want atmosphere between us and these, I'm just going to grab some of the sky color which was over here can you see what i'm doing there grab the sky color with it and then i'm going to get some white now there's my atmosphere in the distance now let's get that in the atmosphere in the in the distance there and i'm going to do maybe just this bit here with this color just to give it a sense of distance and like everything's dry This doesn't need any highlight, this, this colour will do. Um, now this is all dry, it's not going to mud up on you, you can get your other colours over it, it's fantastic. Probably about there. And see why I like this um, filbert brush, it's a good quality one, it's sharp and I'm making all sorts of lovely umbrella shaped foliages there. Now I'm just going to wipe that brush. Now start, I'm going to start with the next darkest colour green that I mixed and this is pretty much, I'm going to start creating the valleys and the shapes of those tree foliage canopies on the rocks with this colour. So leaving darks there as well, I can dribble into that a bit. I want to come on there just little bits, leaving the darks in between. Go right. Don't leave dark on top. If anything, you want the dark underneath because dark shadows are underneath, not on top. And sort of create crest valleys and different ridges in front of each other, putting ones behind. So like, I'll come here, then I'll put this right in front of that one there. I've left some darkness. That can dribble there. Now if this was just on that light colour, it looks a bit not quite right. That's why I put all that dark colour there first to make our brighter colours pop. All right. And if you have a question, comment below and check the links. You can talk to me a lot more direct on Facebook. Look at that. We could see different things happening now. Leaving dark bits and going all over the place. It's fun to do. I love this brush now. It's my little detail brush. 
Here we go. We even got some down here. And up there. See, it's looking okay, and when we put those lighter colours on, it's going to make it pop over here. And the same here. Oh, I've got a big blob there, I don't want that. Get it over that dark colour, come down. Trace it into your lighter values, sort of splice them together. Get these on the top. Put some along the bank there. That'll do. And I want to do the very top here now. Get all this with other values of light colours over these dark colours here. Find my different groups of foliage. There we go. Leaving some dark under there and bring another one down. So if you've got depth. I want to kind of come down here a bit. Beautiful. Let me have a look in my monitor. So I'll just wipe the brush on the easel there. And then we're going to pick up this one now that we've mixed, the lighter one, and watch what this does. Now, with this, we might I might add a little bit of white just to distinguish the forward and the back ones when they're close together in like this area here. But anyway, I'm not going to do there. I'm going to start about here. And this is just highlighting what we just put on now. I'll dribble it in a little bit there. Is my camera on? Yes. Very, if you see I'm going very lightly, it feels like I'm hardly touching it. If you go big and thick there, it's going to push your perspective there up to buggery. And leaving, still leaving dark there, just highlighting that easily does it let me have a look in there getting there getting there all right now we can start getting them a, a bit heavier over here i'm always chiseling the paint on the end of my brush as i load it to get that see those little upside down sad faces sad mouth looking things Leave some of the darks. Don't don't just go over it all. Go in with this one. Leave some of the darks there. It's like that. Adding the same up here. I'll try and I love stepping back and having a look. Or in my case, I look through my camera lens and I can see it's like standing back from your painting. Don't look at it. Walk. Turn your back to your painting when you got so far, like eighty percent and um, turn around and face it with your eyes shut and then open and see how it hits you. I've done that quite a lot and it gives you an idea of what's hitting you, what's sticking out, what's wrong, what's right. See, I just knotted it up there. I'll have to fix that up. So see here I'm putting Leave a little bit of that dark, leave that dark there and bring that in front there. This is just all shrubbery, bush, trees, whatever it is. It's artistic, it looks great. There you go, I said I'll leave mistakes in. That gloobly bit there I've just buggered up. So I'm going to pick up some of the blacky green colour on me brush. Map that in dark again. You're at home, you're not in a rush, you can dry it. So I've got to blow dry that now. So I'm just showing you how I'm fixing up that mistake. Okay, I've blow dried it. I'm picking up the darker green to map it in. Again, it's all little procedures, but it's just panel beating that bit. So we've got the darker green here. I want to come down there in front of that. Okay, I'm just going to wipe the brush, pick up the, the middle value green that we had on our palette here. Make sure it's mixed thoroughly. And then we'll map that back in over that dark area, that footprint we've allowed for it, all the way down there. Okay, 
and I'm picking up the lighter value now just to highlight that. So as it's all back to normal, that's how I fixed up that little mistake. So boom, bidi, boom, bidi, boom, boom, boom. Where were we? Up here. There we go, that's fixed up. Now to highlight this one here, oh, look at that, a big blob again, bugger you. Oh, get that. My goodness. To get this in front of this in front of that now, that color that's up there, I want to add more yellow now. Just to give that very closer one a more brighter, darker highlight, heavier highlight. Okay, so I'm going to use this one just so it's not going to clash with the other one. You want it to sit forward. Now, yeah, so we want this to. sit in front of what we just put there. And I'm putting this on the top of the foliage, not just anywhere all over it. That can come in front. Let's hope that will hide that mistake, yep. Yeah. So what you've got to remember to do is like, don't just do little bits there. There's, that can continue all the way through in front of what's behind it. See like there? So it's another forward section within that area of canopy or trees. It's how your mind starts to think when you're getting the grasp of all of this stuff you know and it's fantastic you can dribble this light stuff right into the dark shadow if you want i'll just show you what i mean so we put the top on i'm going to bring just a little bit there i want to bring this one as one full one in front of that not too much and you even though there's none of the mid-tone green in the the dark bit this can just sit there like the light's just hitting it I tell you what, that camera is right over my shoulder. I'm finding it difficult to get this angle. I'll have a look in the monitor. Not too bad. It's a bit weirdy beardy, but it'll do. I'll just highlight some of this stuff down here that I put there as well. And see, that's pretty much the painting, I think. I'll have a look. I have looked, and I'm just looking here. Let's say wherever our sun is, it's hitting some of the higher areas here. So just little bits of this I want to have like this the sun just hitting the higher bits just to add a bit more bullshit to our painting adding that aspect of lusty bullshit okay around here somewhere in the blacks a bit a little bit on there let me look in the monitor is that working yes it is it is so yeah, and it's radiating pretty much, I'm just doing it, let's say a cloud's shadowing it and it's letting a bit of light come through this certain area. You know how sometimes on a mountain, the um, it's got shadows and cloud coverage on there. So I'm just, so just so this green isn't all just one bland color and we can probably highlight some of these little high bits there, just there come down into that black sea just like that and I'm dying to look into my monitor now I'm putting this in front of that bit down there in front of the black there because this is closer as well can I have a look at that yeah see that's just giving it a bit more lust you know we can keep going with this forever and ever you can even put an old dead tree coming out here if you want now I want to put the water hitting the bank there and I'm going to use, I've just got some more craft paint because that's a little less dense than the um, tube titanium white. So this is going to keep everything straight, very thin out there, very thin, it's coming against the bank there. What do we got there? See, it was that easy. I surprised myself then along here I'm using this stick because you want these lines horizontal with your painting you don't want them all bent if you can help it if you do bend them just go oh well need to practice them a bit more and this water is sort of agitating against here it's getting a bit more detailed it's agitating against the um, bank there. I could have put, I'll just pick up a little bit if I can. Yeah, I've just stained it with a little bit of that thalo blue that I had on the board there. 
and then um, we'll get out here as well, just tucked in there, and some of it can probably all agitating in there it's probably like a cape or something does that look all right yeah that'll do that'll do now this bit here I'd like to you know get this maybe out a bit from there yeah that's the way and it's just agitating against the bottom there beautiful And if, I'd better do the other side quickly and smartly. So we're <clears throat> there we go. Make it all jaggedy and in and out, not just a solid line if you can help it. I suppose this is a massive gorge or a lake now, the way it's turned out. Nothing like the reference picture, but we've used that reference to create this painting. Yeah, I'm talking like an idiot again. See there, it's a bit loud. I'm just going to wipe that brush, see what happens. And then, oh golly goodness, wipe it on a dryable surface, because that's a bit too loud now. And blend that, soften that silly mark back. And I think just to finish it off, this is just a bullshit aspect. I'm going to put some mist here, okay? That's dry. Everything's dry. I want it nice and dry for this, okay? And I want to grab my little flat brush that's quite fared out at the end. I'll pick up some of this craft paint. I've got it into the brush and then I want to take it out. And we want to start... Bring in some of that. Let's hope it's not too loud. Let me see down here. That's fine. Oh, it's a bit. Here we go. Just the minimal. I'm going to come from the sky and over this green mainly. Now it feels like there's nothing there, but I know something's putting like a net curtain effect in front of all that foliage there. It's. I'm just hoping it looks like the distant atmosphere. There we go. Let me have a look, because looking that far, it'll be a bit out of focus. Up in the sky a bit as well. Merge them all together. How's that looking? Not too bad. It's a little bit... Needs a bit more, I think. Make sure your surface is very dry, though, because you don't want to start mixing it together. You want this sitting on top of all that detail back there. I'm going to autograph this one right down here. I'll try and get a tiny one in here. And remember, like I said, check the links in the description below. All my tutorial paintings are for sale. And you can join my art group page. There's even a um, PayPal donate link there. You can use that to pay for your paintings. Or even if you just want to simply support my content, you can send money through there as well. It's fantastic. I'll get an autograph finished here. And we'll get Steve's little paw print going as well. Then we can whack a frame on it, eh? Okay, we'll put my frame on here. This should look nice. Yes, lovely. Not too shabby. Got some distant rock mountain here and one's in the foreground there with some atmosphere between us and it. We've got some reasonable good sky a beginner can comprehend and achieve, all right? Okay, thank you for watching me. I really enjoyed painting this for you people today. And check the link in the description below. I have over 200 plus tutorials on my channel here, just, just like this. Some are more better, some are more snotty. Depends what you want. But there's over 200 there. Get familiar with my playlist, all right? And if you like what I'm doing here, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't, tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.